Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. This morning, a gunman opened fire on a group of Republicans practicing for the annual congressional baseball game, a charity. The shooter, who was a man called James Hodgkinson, was an enthusiastic progressive and a Bernie Sanders supporter who appears to have done this for ideological reasons. Before opening fire, Hodgkinson asked whether the baseball players were Democrats or Republicans. At this point, the only death is the shooter himself, but five other people were wounded badly in some cases. Two Capitol Hill police officers, a Hill staffer, a lobbyist, and the House Majority Whip, Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Mr. Scalise remains in grave condition tonight in a Washington hospital. There are reports that the president will be visiting his bedside sometime this evening. We'll keep you updated on that. But this morning, in a depressingly familiar ritual, journalists and politicians wasted no time trying to score political points from the shootings. Blogger and Twitter buffoon David Frum may have been the quickest to the scene. As the rest of the country was waking up to the horrifying news of what had happened, Frum was busy writing his sermon. Quote, Virginia, no background checks, no licensing, no registration, no permit required for concealing of carried long guns, open carry long guns, and handguns. Well, it'd be funny if it wasn't so gross and absurd. A concealed carry permit for a rifle? What does that even look like? And by the way, Virginia does require a background check to buy a gun. But Frum was not alone. In a morning statement, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe claimed that 93 million people die every single day in this country thanks to gun violence. 93 million, more than a third of the country, murdered every day of the calendar year. The governor said that multiple times. This is what happens, of course, when ignorant liberals talk about firearms, but it misses the point anyway. What happens today isn't horrifying because it was gun violence. It's horrifying because it was political violence, and therefore it threatens the basic stability of our country. That's why shooting a congressman for his party affiliation is a bigger deal than killing a man in a bar because he hit on your wife. They're both bad and immoral, but only one could potentially lead to civil war. Some on the hard left understand this, and that's why they support it, because political violence could lead to the dissolution of a country they despise, this country. Huffington Post writer Jesse Benn tweeted his approval of the Scalise shooting, quote, the world would be a better place without him, end of story. Benn's only criticism of the attack was its limited scale, quote, for violent resistance to work, it'd need to be organized. Individual acts can be understandable, but likely counterproductive or ineffective. Whoa. On the other side of the divide, some are looking to blame the media or Bernie Sanders for the shooting. It's an understandable temptation, maybe, but it's best resisted. The only person directly responsible for what happened today is the man who pulled the trigger. That said, there are some lessons we might be able to learn from what happened this morning. One is that in this volatile moment, and it is volatile, people with megaphones ought to be responsible about what they say. That means never excusing political violence under any circumstances. That means condemning shootings like this, but it also means riots, assaults, occupations, threats, any other attempt to achieve political goals through force ought to be condemned. Being responsible also means being intellectually honest and not implying you know more than you actually do know. If you believe, for example, that Russia had improper involvement in last fall's election, that's fine. Make your case. But don't accuse your political opponents of treason unless you have hard evidence that they committed treason. It seems obvious. But there are big ratings in conspiracy theories these days, and some can't resist. They should resist. Above all, though, don't dehumanize your political opponents. The people who disagree with you are still people. Politics is not a referendum on virtue. It is not a holy war. It's a debate about how best to run the country. Reasonable people can disagree on that. They have for hundreds of years. The other side isn't evil. They are wrong. More than anything, they are our fellow Americans, kin to us, and that means far more than any differing view on Obamacare or marginal tax rates or even Russia. If you keep that in mind, you won't lose your decency.